Hi, and welcome to Watercolor with Sonia. Today I'm going to do a quick um, demonstration on this uh, scene from Van Dusen Gardens. It was early spring, around the beginning of April, and the azaleas were just starting to come out with the birch. So rather than trying to get a huge amount of birch in there, I've just done very simple three um, areas of birch tree that I'm going to keep. I have recommended for those of you who are uncomfortable with masking or not sure about keeping the whites to just tape over with masking tape. And I'm just going to show you how to do that in a moment. I just have to find my masking tape. And what I'm trying to do today is a couple of different things. One is a couple of layering processes. And then, uh, as well as the layering, to do a bit of control with the wash coming down on the page. So I have a slightly angled paper at this point in time, about 30 degrees. And you're going to see how we're going to try and control the wash as we bring it down and then add a little bit of spray or add a little bit of water for some, uh, sorry, salt for some fun. So I was trying to look here for some tape. I think I found some. So the idea with the tape, the masking tape here, I have a very thin one just to give you an idea because I'll do the branches. I won't do the whole big stuff. So you would take some tape like this. You just put it onto your clothes a little bit to make it less sticky. And then you would apply it where you need to. If you need to, you know, tear it a little bit to make it a little thinner. And then you would just leave that on there like that. And that allows the paper, uh, that part to stay white without having to worry about masking fluid or anything else like that. Uh, I can, if I want, if I want to make, you know, different branch sizes, I can certainly do that too by just cutting up the tape and then applying it. Let's see if I can make that look like a branch. Okay, so I'll leave those two like that. Now that I've started, I might as well do a little bit more because I can see a couple places where it's going to be easier for me if I do this. So for example, just a little bit here. There's another big one right around that corner there. So even just that little bit of branch there can help if I just get that in the right place. I'll put that here. Some of those whites are harder to maintain while you're doing a, a wash. The, this straight area, you should be able to get around it quite well. Let's put a branch in here. And the others I can lift too in terms afterwards, but since I'm showing you the process, you might as well see how it's done. Okay, we're going to leave a lot of this down here white, but if we control the way the wash is going to go down, we should be okay down here. As you can see with the whites on this side here. All right. So I'm going to start with a very moppy brush, round, size 8. This is a Da Vinci. I think you can see it there. And I'm going to begin by mixing some, uh, I was suggesting Terre Verde. Uh, but what I'm going to use is actually Phalo Windsor Green Blue Shade with a little bit of my Hansa Yellow Light. And I'm just mixing it up over here if you can see it. Now what I was suggesting is um, you can actually make this a little bit more like terre verte by adding a little bit of um, zinc white. And what it does is it just makes it a little bit less concentrated, a little bit more opaque, but gives you that um, softer feeling. So I need a little bit more. I haven't got enough water here. I need a lot of water. Now I can just keep dabbing my brush or I can take my spray bottle and I can spray water here or I can actually dump a bunch of water in. I have an eye droplet for that too that I could do that. There we go. Okay so we need definitely more pigment. Now it's going to be a light wash but that's too light and I need so I'm just going to push a little bit more pigment over here. Whoops I got it onto another place. I don't want it. Drop that off and just see, test it out, test it out. It's always good to test it out. I have paper everywhere and you think I can find a place to test. Okay, here's the testing sheet. That's quite light 
Uh, I want it a little bit yellower, not quite so bluish. Okay, so let's take my testing sheet, put it aside, and add a little bit more Hansa. Now, the other way to do this would be to add just a wee bit of red in here, permanent rose, just a tiny bit, because it'll also warm it up, but also give it a, just a different, more olive tone to it. Let's try that again. So that was our first go around. I like that. That's what I want. That's what I'm trying to achieve. Okay, I'm going to just dab that off. It's nice and wet. So we're going to start by going up here and just doing a first. Now we haven't wet anything. So we're just going to do our first layer. And what we're looking for is a nice bead in between here that holds on. But we're not going to go any further down. We're just going to get that bead started. Whoops, I went into the tree. Okay, let's dab out that tree. And, oh no, it wasn't the tree. Okay, so there we go. There is there. I think we're in here, and here, here, and here. Okay. So now you just, you want that bead of water at the bottom, so just keep dabbing in that water to get that bead going. And now we're just gonna add a little bit more paint. Bring that right down in there. And I can lift that bead in a minute, I'll show you how. And then we're gonna, I keep forgetting where that tree is. Just gonna keep getting it down a little bit longer. We're not quite ready yet. I need a little bit more paint, so I'm just gonna bring in some of the green, well that's really, wow. That's too saturated. Mix that around a bit. Okay, now we're going to bring it across and bring it down. Now I can always just come in with my Hansa yellow light and just drop in a bit more yellow if I feel I want a little bit of a variation on the coloring that's going on behind there. I'm just trying to get that. But remember, we don't want to go too far because we are going to be now uh, getting to the point where that beading is going to be lifted and we're going to drop in some of our azalea color. So I'm just trying to look here how far I want to go. I want to go about one third. I'm going to put that down there. One third. One third. Now we're going to have that there, there. It's starting to look good. Bring that down a bit into the center here. Okay, so we're carrying that bead. Now I'm just going to drop in. What do I want? I want a little bit more Yellow, maybe? How about a little bit of red? Let's see what the red does. Mix that up in there. That's too dark, maybe. Bring some more green in. Try and add a little bit more phthalo green. Blue shade in there. See what happens. You're in control, so you can move that around, and if you don't like it, you can lift it. Right? And bring it up again. Now, one thing I didn't do, or try to do, was actually um, put in any more of the white. So I could always do that. Now I'm just going to bring it a little, up, a little bit more up. Pull it up a bit. Okay, so now that I've got to this stage, I want some of that down below here, but we're going to add it later. So what I wanted to show you is if I was to spray this right now, it's too wet and it would give me some subtle texture, but nothing really. So what I really want to do is either keep pulling this up to get some of those colors up there or just basically soak it up and take it away. Let's add a little bit more in here. Oh, we need maybe a bit more in there. So now we're watching the, the basically how, how sharp, uh, and like how shiny, not sharp, how shiny our paper is. Because that'll tell us how much water is there. Okay, so we're just going to lift that again. Let that go away. 
Okay. So now that we've got our basic green background, we can always go again with a little bit more yellow if we feel that we want just a hint of yellow coming through there. Drop it in again. And this is just straight pigment going in, so if you want a little bit, we'll come in with a little bit darker later on. But in this uh, process, I chose to do a red, and I suggested that you could do it with a cadmium red or a scarlet lake. I'm just looking here what I've got. That's quinacridone coral. My cadmium is just around the corner here. Cadmium is also a little bit um, more on the... I've got rose matter. Everything but. There's my cadmium right here. Let's see if I'll be able to open that one up. Um, Cadmium is a little bit more on the opaque side, and you could mix and make with Hansa Yellow Light the same color. Now I have another one behind here too, I can see it. I was just using them the other day. Let's try and open it. I don't often use Cadmium Red. I use more Scarlet Lake. But my Scarlet Lake, aha, there we go. My Scarlet Lake isn't handy, so let's use the red. Okay, where am I going to put it? I have a tray over here. Oh, I have my glasses. Here we go. Oh, it doesn't even want to come out. Okay. So I'm going to have it. It's quite dry. As you can see, it's quite dry. I haven't used it for a long time. I have so many of them, and I chose the one that's dry. So I'm just going to add water to it and see if I can... Oh, yeah. I've got lots of color here. So in my mixing tray down here that you can't see, I'm just mixing some cadmium red in place. And again, the same thing, I need to get some water in there because it's going to be my first layer. It's going to be nice and wet like this too. So there's my cadmium and I'm just going to add some water. Well, that's no good. Let's try it this way. Now we don't need quite as much because we're not covering that much of an area. So here we go. We're starting off right up here where the bead was. I'm going to let that go right in. And we're going to fill in an area that kind of comes down to the middle third. It's just we're just filling in this middle third. Now you can leave a little bit of white if you want to. And this came down a bit further. And then went up in here. And I'm doing more, more dry brushing because I'm, I'm just kind of, I want some variation in the color for the azalea. Of course, there's greens and stuff in between the azalea bushes. I'm going to try and create that effect with a few different aspects, either salt or by spraying with some water. Um, now, you see above here, it's still too wet. I can't really apply the water on that. So what I'm trying to do now is allow that bead to come down, drop in some more paint in a few places, and the level of wetness here is not too bad. I might actually be able to use the salt in this area. So I have this salt in my bag here. Let's see if I can apply a little salt. This is just regular table salt. And I'm just going to spray a little bit on there. Let's see if we get any kind of effect. What am I looking for? I'm looking for some just some unique shape and color to go with it. So I can't really apply anything else. I'll have to wait for my second layer. But what I can do is just take away some of this paint here. Now, you see, I didn't take much away because why? I did not dry the brush. So in order to do that, I have to dry the brush and then lift. Just You don't really have to touch much. The edge of the tip of it will just soak up the paint without you having to actually do any painting. Okay, so now we're in a, our lower area of um, our section here. 
I want to start with that same green that I have. And so I'm going to apply that right in here, just the same way I did before, down to my rock level. And my lower area was just a little bit darker green, so first I'm just going to apply the color that I had up above, but with no yellow, extra yellow in it. And then eventually we will come in and we'll add darker colors. I'm going to bring that right down to the bottom here. Here, and you notice I'm not trying to wash across and make that variation as much as it was over there. Okay, so I've got my color layer in there. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to try and pull it up into my azalea bushes and see what that does. And then just let it filter down a bit. Okay, same thing here. Just pull it up into my bush. Uh, salt is working well on the... I don't see a whole lot on the upper part, but that's okay. Okay. Now I want a darker green. The best way to get a darker green is to use a warmer yellow. So I'm going to use new gamboge. Where can I show you this? Here's my new gamboge with my Windsor green blue shade. That's definitely darker. You can see that. But I, I'm going to add a little bit of the phthalo blue or Windsor blue in there because I want some variation on some of the coloring back down here. It's a little bit more shadowy. So let's just pop in some of those colors. We'll just make a variation. We can add a little bit of yellow in there. This is my Hansa yellow light that I can just pop in to make a little bit of fresh new spring green. Popping that in a few of the areas here. Now let's come back to the little bit of darker, which is my warmer green with my new gamboge. And I can also make it a little bit more neutral by adding some permanent rose in there. There we go. So now we can get, look at that. Ooh, I love it. Now we can also go a little bit greener, grayer, sorry, by adding a little bit more of the uh, permanent rose just popping in a bit. Just being careful that we're not getting too much. So you could even put a little bit up there, but I think I need a little bit more green. So let's just uh, add a bit in these areas here, down by the lower area of the tree a bit. Need a little bit, a tiny touch of water because we're starting to look not as loose as, as I'd like. It's all starting to dry really fast. Okay, so I'm just using a little bit of the Windsor Blue Green shade. Other way around. Windsor Green Blue shade, and now the Windsor Blue Green shade. And I'm going to take a little bit of spray, wetting it up a bit. Oh, that's traveling around too much. Oh, that's a lot. Okay, so let's lift that a bit and let that move around and sit that for a second. It's flat now. I'm looking for my tissue. Although I like all this, I have to get some of this moisture away. And we'll even take it away from the tree. Remember, tissue is your friend and you can always just apply where you need to. Actually, that's not bad for the color of the tree even. Okay, well, that's great. Okay. I have to find my brush. All right, so now the only thing we have to do is we have to make some of that brown. And that's just a little bit more yellow and red in that same mixture with a tiny bit of Windsor blue. So there's the brown right there. Um, we could add a little bit more yellow to it. There we go. Let's see how that is. There we are. That's a bit too... A little bit more. 
Oh, now I got it green. Go back again. There we go. So I want a bit of pathway here. Base of the tree. Oh, and I have to have my sca scraping tool ready, and I don't have it ready, so I'm going to have to improvise pretty quick if I don't have it. Just see if it's in here. So when I say scraping tool, it's just any kind of little plastic or uh, flat pallet knife or anything that you can use that will do is make a scrape like that. Um, and what I usually do is I cut up a little credit card or a cruise card or something that I'm you know, no longer using as a points card and I apply that. So let me just look here to see if I have something handy. I have all sorts of things stashed everywhere, just so whether or not it's going to dry before I find it. Now, some of the brushes that I have actually have a tip on them where you could actually do the, the scraping with the tip like that. So let's just finish putting in some of this area here. And then just pulling in some of the grass. Now let's add a little bit more green, a little bit more blue. Oh, that's too green. Okay, let's put a little bit of that green up there. Add a little bit of yellow. We're going to go back to our warm yellow. Pop in a bit of that. And eventually I'm going to start putting in some purple here too, but I just want a little bit more of that brown. There's the purple. To get some of the shadows. That's oh, looking a little red. There we go. Now we got some nice, starting to get those darks in there. Uh, and we're going to get some shadows on the rocks too, right on the edges there. Oh, well, now I've got blue. That's going to be too dark. Let's get a little bit of the yellow back in there to get a nice gray back. I've still this, I've got this gorgeous rich green, but I think that's too dark for some of the things that I'm going to have. This is more of a really forest green. This is a, so much more a spring green right now, right? Uh, but we could add a little bit down at the base here, just kind of an edge. And spray that in a bit. Want to keep it loose, right? I keep forgetting to mention keep it loose. Okay, so now that I've kept it loose, I've got to find that dill tissue that I've been using. If I want to move it around a bit, oh, I'm going to try and keep this flat now. I've got a little bit of a lip there that I can use to keep it flat from where I was on my easel here. All right, so we've got a nice, some nice things happening. Let's just get rid of that shadow on the top there. I'm lifting a little bit here. Okay. Um, it's so wet on the bottom, we can't really do anything with that just at the moment, but we can play with some of this fun stuff here. Now look at how nice that salt put in there. All right, so what I'd like to do is go back and find my red. And with, uh, I'm just going to go straight to my tube here because I'll have a lot of nice color. And you, I could wait until the salt is completely done or I can just, because it's so nice and wet, put in some really nice deeper color right at the front here. And in some places, so there could be some distant areas. Now I did mention that you could do purple as well, but what I'm really liking about the red is it's a really wonderful complement to the green because they're complementary colors. And so I thought between these two shades, it would be a lovely way to enjoy some azaleas coming through. Now I could orange them up too. I could add a little bit of yellow in there and just create a bit of an effect where there's maybe some changes of color, some blooms coming out. Because I have the salt, I don't really want to spray too much. Okay, so 
if I feel that I want some shadow, what do I need to do? I can take my permanent rose and try and go in there and see if it'll make it a little bit darker. Or I can take the permanent rose with a little bit of blue and I can go in there and I, it'll make it a nice dark purple that I can just add a few, even just branches. But you know what? We've got enough detail. I don't need to really do a lot. And then just have fun adding a bit of color into certain areas where I want it a little darker. Okay, so now we're, we're pretty good here. I'd like a little bit more of the shadow in this area. So I'm going straight to my Payne's Gray and it's not working. Here we go. It's a bit wet in here still to make it. I'm going to have to let that layer actually darken and, and dry. It's too wet. So I'm just going to, we're going to be putting a little bit, the sun is coming that direction down. So there will be some light areas up at the top of the rock. As you saw, I could lift it with my brush. Or I could wait for it to dry and then do it a little bit that way. Uh, I didn't do much scraping there, did I? Let's try again. No, that's not going to work. Let's find, oh, there's my palette knife. Let's try and see what we can do. There we go. Now it's still really wet. So nothing I'm doing is really going to keep that, those grasses. It's just going to make darker lines in those areas. So I'll just get a few grasses going here. Now you could do that too for inside the, there we go. There's, see, now this is dry enough that I could actually scrape out some of the maybe small branches. This is too dry now here. So I didn't wait long enough there, but I can get it into the azalea bush a little bit. There you go. Okay, so you've seen a little bit of the scraping when it's really wet, and when it's medium wet, and when it's dry, it's not going to infect everything. So now with my palette knife, I will be able to go across like this and create some nice lines for the birch. Um, you can do it with a brush too, but it's easier if you mix the palette up with a, the color that you want and then just scrape it across and you'll get some really nice colors. We're going to have to wait a little bit longer for that because this is still too wet. Now I can take a hairdryer to it. Um, let me just see. There was, I was, I did put a little bit, I'm noticing on here, a little bit of the gray back here, but I'm going to have to spray it wet first up at the top if I want to do that. It's not dry, not wet enough. So if I go in now and just add a little bit of gray, it's going to create just a, a little bit maybe of, or maybe I should put a little bit of bluish gray in there. And I'm just adding a little bit of blue at the same time. If you want like a little effect of tree or idea of maybe some branches coming through that you haven't seen. Um, there we go. Now that's a little too, too strong, so let's loosen it up. Here, let's do that too. Spray it and loosen it up. Perfect. Okay, now I'm going to take that gray, grayish green. Uh, that's way too wet. I'm just trying to get a little bit of shadow in here, but some interest. Maybe add a little bit more in here. Around this area between the grasses here. Maybe some shadow coming off of the tree. I need a little bit more of a dark, not so much, uh, oh, brown, 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 brown. So I have made the brown by using the red and the yellow. Let's see if I can get, there we go, there's a bit more brown there. Okay. Um, on the other side, we can just add a bit more brown back here, maybe. And we'll eventually get that gray back in here when it's not so wet. So where can I put a little bit of that other darker color in there? I could even take a little bit of blue, pop that in. And I'm looking here a little bit darker there, so I'm gonna get a little darker green in here, put it in here. 
Okay, I think we're good. Yeah. All right. So while this is drying, um, I'm going to now lift carefully these pieces of tape and hope that I haven't, if still, it's not too wet that I can't lift these off. Okay, there's one. There's another one. Try to look to see. It's hardly, they can, you can hardly even see that they're there, so it's a bit fiddly. But it certainly saves you time, let me tell you that. I think I've got them all. Perfect. All right, so now I said make brown, right? So uh, here's my bit of red that I still have for my cadmium. I'm just going to take a little bit more cadmium in there. What you're trying to do is keep it as simple as possible with the colors. And since I already use cadmium, I should continue to use a bit of cadmium. Adding per permanent rose now and those kind of colors, it just adds another extra color that is harder to unify. So if I can stick to my red and my yellow right now, which kind of almost made brown, but not yet. If I take some of this color that I already had, now I'm starting to get a darker brown here. There we go. Very nice. So I got a lighter brown, darker brown. If I want even a lighter brown on the one side, I can just add a little bit of yellow. And then we have, if I want a darker, I can just add the phalo blue green shade. Oh, that's making it a little too green. We need to add a little bit more red. And a bit more red. Okay. So now why do I want these colors? I am, I still need, I'm going to take some of the, the permanent, uh, this is Payne's Gray because I need to have a bit darker brown. There we go. Okay. This is for my birch. So I'm going to take my palette knife. I'm going to take the paint, put it on the side. And what I'm trying to do is scrape across. So I haven't been able to capture that paint. So let's try again. Oh, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, let's try that. There we go. And now what I'm trying to do is just slowly get some of that feeling of the birch tree and the edge of the birch uh, bark. Having the scraping tool is a little bit easier because this is more malleable. The scraping tool is a little bit easier to work with. Okay, we've got a slow process there. So I'm just going to come in with my brush and do a bit of with a point here. You can you could always take a smaller brush and try it there. And yeah, just put in. Now I also suggest that if you want to, I'm going to make it darker in some of this area, um, that you could. Um, I'm going to need some shadow. Um, just some dark to make that tree pop. I'll get a little darker red there. Um, where what was I talking about? Oh yeah, here we go. I'll just put some of those in. And... Maybe just do the scraping that way. Might be a little bit easier. Yeah. So let's pop in a line and scrape. That's too much. Where was I going? Oh yeah, I know what I was trying to tell you about the. I suggest that some of you, if you wanted to, you could use. Um, a fine liner, to outline the tree, like I have in this picture here. Because um, you could certainly do a little bit of outlining, but you don't want too much. You just want to kind of get that feel that the bark is there. And, and the easier thing would be to get some darks behind the white, right? To get it popping out. And some of the branches end up being just a darker color anyways, especially around the edges. Let's just... Drop in a little bit of color there. And now I can either scrape them. Oh, I could spray it a little bit because there would be some flex too. Let me see if I have anything that I could use as a spatter tool. 
But if you're going to spatter, this is what you have to do. I'm going to lift some of that. I'm not happy with that dark there. Okay. So what you would do is you'd cover up. I'm just going to use something else that's not going to impact anything. Okay, so you just take that, and that's pretty much, hmm, maybe fold that in half. Okay, like that. So then you take your toothbrush or another uh, rough brush. Let's see here. I've got a couple of different brushes that I can try. So I could take a big, the soft brush like this will work. You have to make it wet, and you have to put your paint on there. And then you're just basically tapping it on another Okay. Now, you could I uh, got it everywhere except where I really wanted it. But it, it you kind of get the idea. Um, let me just wipe this off. And wipe that off on my rest of my pad. Okay, so what I'm noticing is that I don't have enough shadow in here as it's drying. So I want another layer, uh, especially of the red. I want a nice so I'm just going into the permanent rows just just because I've got it here and it's accessible so I'm just going to pop that in bring that maybe a little bit down in here now I did mention trying to get a little darker closer to the tree to make that tree pop out a bit more now I could certainly also Nothing wrong with spattering around on the on this area too. What I find is most neutralized is, is the lower part here. And I did mention I was going to go back in and take the gray. And I'm just, I think this is neutral tint. So I'm adding some Windsor blue to it to warm up the gray. Well, to cool down the gray. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha. That's what I want. And I want a little bit behind here so that you can get the, the stone work. Um, but you also have a little bit of a light coming in down there. Okay, so that leads you off. There's the trail. Now, what I should do is spatter around here to get some gravelly effect. So I'm just going to try and pull a little bit in there and there and pop it in there. Let's let's add some of that to the birch tree too, right? Because the skin is always a couple different colors. Add a bit of dark back here. Pop that out a bit more. That's it. Okay, and we can even add a little bit more of a pop or two back here. Oh, let's finish off our tree here. We haven't even touched this one. Where's my brown? Just remixing some more brown. I'm out of brown here. Now, if you were to feel uncomfortable mixing brown, you could certainly go in and just right away add in burnt umber. No problem. But I'm just trying to make it interesting by creating. Let's see now. I said if I put that in there and if I scrape it around. Pretty hard to do, eh? Just can't get it moving very well today. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to go back and that's too wet. So a good small rigger brush would be an excellent way of thing to, to put some movement in little lighter branches and stuff. Not so heavy. I'm trying to look in the camera, see how that's looking. Remember the shadows around the edge of the branches when they turn and stuff? That's always important. And when I did the composition too, what I was trying to make sure of was, um, just going to add a little bit more darks in here, was to make sure that the kind of composition started to go in so that your eye would kind of walk around. Either it goes down the path and then comes around the trees, but you don't want it going off the, the area. So let's, now that we've said that, let's put in some of the shadows that I need for my 
rock. And I could soften again with water. Give it a little bit of a looser texture. Uh, let's see if I could even there you go. make it interesting. Oh, that's not wet enough. Just have fun playing, you know? only way you learn and see what you like and don't like is by trying it. Let's try and lift that up a bit. There we go. Scoop it over and get that to the edge. All right. So would I do any more spatter? Possibly. I can see it better in the... Oh yeah, I said I was going to spatter down here. But you know what? It's really wet right now, so maybe I better wait. Um, just quickly see if I can find something that has a finer spatter. I don't see anything at the moment. So I'm going to just... Oh, fan brush. We have a fan... Oh, stippling brush. There you go. Here's my stippling brush. And I can just dab in there and just stipple a bit. I could do that on the tree too. There we go, now I'm getting it. So I could put in any kind of color if you felt that that would help a little bit. Just to carry out. Let's play around with your brushes and see what you like. I don't want to lose all the white. That was the whole purpose of some of this stuff, just to get the white there and keep the white. Uh, let's see if I could... I could almost use salt in here too, which would make it more of a granite rock. Where's my salt again? because it's still wet enough there that I could definitely get a bit of texture there. Okay, so that is our birch trees in Van Dusen. And like I did the cadmium and the permanent rose uh, in the azaleas, you could certainly go and add in uh, purple instead. and. I was just going to show you, even if I just took a little bit of the phthalo blue and popped in, you'd suddenly get the starting to turn purple. And you could have fun with that too. Depending on uh, the... I've been finding that the best purple is with a little bit of the red and the Windsor green blue shade. Let's see if that how that one turns out. It's a lovely purple. Which is, it's another, another nice shadow color too. And it just helps things to pop out a bit more than they were. Okay. Actually, I'll let that just sit like that. That, look, that give it some really nice depth in there. Let's try and pop in a little bit more. Get some more of that depth back there because we're missing that. can see it better in the video. So if I was going to um, do anything else now, I would come back in once it's completely dry and I'd use my uh, fine liner such as this fabric castell i think that's fabric castell um and it's waterproof it's a pit pen this is black and you could go in and you could add in some fine lines like this okay other than that that is your trees in van dusen and i will just sign the picture with a little bit of paint here here we go 
Now that I have that color, I can darken this just a bit here. Oh, some of the salt did actually work in here. That's good. Okay, and when this is completely dry, um, what I can do is just brush it off that any of that residual salt that's on there I can just uh, take it but it has to be completely dry because if you don't let it can be completely dry what happens is it um, smudges all right so thanks for watching <laughs>